In this session, we're going to take a look at the all new shiny Microsoft Sustainability Manager, an absolute skill that IT pros are going to definitely want to know. So we're going to talk about exactly what it is and more importantly, how you can get involved. Check it out. Greetings fellow YouTubers, how are you? Andy Malone, the Microsoft MVP, as well as that certified trainer for 25 years now, by the way. Um, you are very welcome, especially, hey, if this is your first visit here. You know, we all have a, uh, an interest in not just monitoring carbon emissions, but also uh, hopefully reducing them. And Microsoft Sustainability Manager is an absolutely must have skill uh, if you want to move your career forward in IT. And I think it's going to be something that's going to impact us on, on us all, uh, not just the environment, of course, but having the appropriate skill. So in this session, I thought I would take you through the basics from zero to hero and we'll take a look at exactly what sustainability manager is and more importantly how it works and of course how you can get involved with it. Now if you have questions and comments about this or in fact any of my other sessions then please do uh, of course get those down below I would really appreciate it. Now if you enjoyed the session bump the like button it does make a difference and if you are not subscribed then hell come on on board come and join our great learning community that I'm very much trying to build out. Just bump the subscribe button up there ring that bell and you'll be notified. Okay, so I think without any further ado, let's first of all have a quick discussion about exactly what we're talking about, sustainability, and then we're going to go in and have a look at the actual product itself. So stay tuned. I think you'll learn something here. You know, as the world moves forward towards the ultimate goal of net zero, we're all starting to realize that we need to do more for the environment. And the first stage of that process is obviously identifying sources of emissions. And these can involve energy uh, generation, buildings, transportation, industry, and even agriculture and other land use as well. But when it comes to sustainability, my friends, we all have a responsibility. Now we can see here that both direct and indirect sources of emissions, so directly of course can involve in the manufacturing process and the transportation uh, of your products, but there's also indirect sources as well. So for example, your supply chain, your electricity providers, um, how do you deal with waste management? How do you deal with business travel? Um, and anything that you produce, for example. So aircraft, cars, mobile devices, computers, what happens to them at the end of life? How is that content recycled? So sustainability is something that we cannot ignore anymore. So in this session, we're gonna take a look at the new and shiny sustainability manager and how you can monitor your carbon emissions and how important it is to do that and ultimately, this will reduce those emissions and bring us closer to net zero. So, that's the chat. Let's take a look at exactly how it works. So to get started, simply go to microsoft.com slash sustainability, and this is where you will start. It's all about assessing your impact on the environment, and this is exactly what Sustainability Manager does. It helps you manage it, helps you monitor it, and ultimately, as I've said, uh, reduce those emissions. Um, also, we're really looking at accelerating your progress, so transforming your business uh, to make those real changes. So uh, you can see that there is a number of reports here and you can actually start the trial process. So on the subject of demo data, Microsoft give you a whole bunch of demo data to set you up. Um, but of course, later on, you can then delete this uh, and actually go ahead and create your own. Uh, but it is a great tool if you want to go and learn it. So all I do here is I'm setting up the structure, I'm setting up my facilities here. So you can see I can go in uh, and it's giving me the locations of my various uh, warehouses. You can add the data there as well by simply clicking on the edit button. And again, you get that really nice kind of uh, useful Power BI uh, experience here. 
Um, of course, what type of industries are you? So again, you'll need to specify uh, whether you're a food and beverage organization, whether you deal with uh, animals and crops. And again, there's a whole bunch of other categories here that you can tailor uh, for your environment. So once you've set that up, the, the, again, you've got a number of other settings here. Uh, region mapping. So again, different regions will have their own obviously legal and compliance requirements so you can see that we're a fairly large company here so I've gone ahead and set those regions up here uh, now you can see it talks about the data settings so again the reference points for collecting the data here so you can see that we've got some reference data uh, and again I can click onto that data and it will let me show me, first of all, uh, how that data was collected. So I can uh, add that data in here. It will show me how the data was collected, the source of that data, the destination where it was, the active period uh, and how it finished. Uh, also the amount of percentage and also the uh, value. So as I said, you can easily just add in uh, the different data sources here. You can also add in Power BI as well. So we have a number of flows here as well. Um, so once you've added in your data, you can see I'm not using any data at the moment, but once you've added in your data, you can create a, a flow environment. For just for your reference, Microsoft provides you with details on all the different greenhouse gases. And to be honest, I never realized there were so many. Um, in terms of uh, unit groups, again, you can go in and fill all this data in here. You can see that. Uh, and once you've done that, basically, once you've filled in all your data, this is probably the most important area. Then we can start analyzing the data here. So um, again, there is a configuration guide. And again, if you're not quite sure how this works, there are links to learn.microsoft.com and these will take you through the entire thing. And so you can see we have a number of pieces of data here in our report. So it shows me the uh, emissions. And again, I mentioned those different scopes uh, of emissions, which is really important. So not just obviously primary, but also secondary emissions as well. Uh, again, revenue and also the, the amount of renewable energy that your organization in, is using. And again, you can measure that by country. Uh, and you can see there's a, a nice report here and there's like a, a, a nice tour that will take you through uh, everything. Uh, we also get some uh, emissions insights here as well. So you can delve uh, deeper into this and you can see this is all generated uh, via Power BI. So it's really easy to understand. And of course, you can change the charts and graphs and uh, customize everything. So we have the different scopes here and you can also uh, have a look at things like the amount of renewable energy. Uh, you have a look at the trends uh, and you can also do things like uh, a good deep analysis of this uh, information as well. Now, of course, getting your data in is absolutely critical. So you can see that we've got, uh, again, and this will all depend on the type of business uh, that you are. So you've got your direct uh, emissions and also you've got your indirect emissions. And you, of course, you would customize this uh, for your business. Uh, once you've done that, um, we also have some new additions. So, uh, of course, cloud never sleeps. We've now got uh, water data as well. So, again, if this is important to you, certainly uh, if you're doing things like hydroelectric power and so on, then this will be. Um, you can also import data from different sources as well. And there are a number of reports here. Uh, you can either use templates or or you can use uh, Power BI queries as well. And there are a number of partner solutions uh, that you can bring in. Uh, okay, so once you've brought in your data, uh, again, so really just, as you can see, just really three areas. This is the analytics. Reporting, of course, is super important. So I want to go in and have a look, for example, at my emissions highlights here. You might want to do that uh, deep analysis of that, allocations, and also uh, any kind of customizations that you've done here.
So uh, once you've done that, of course, you can then export that data out, which again is super important. And as I've said, there's a configuration guide which explains how to do that uh, completely. Something that I really like as well is that we also have the scorecards at the bottom as well. So again, you can create these uh, scorecard, you can add your own. But again, this is a very useful way of just monitoring where you are up to as a whole. And again, this is quite useful for that uh, historical perspective as well. So there you have it, just a very quick overview of um, sustainability manager. And as I say, definitely sign up for that. I think this is going to be such a useful skill to know. So there you have it, Microsoft Sustainability Manager. Isn't that cool? Hey, listen, if you're really interested in that and you want to know more, then I'll put the links in below and definitely go out and uh, check that out. And you can actually sign up for a trial subscription as well. Now, uh, questions, comments, get those down below. And if you've not subscribed, well, we'd love to have you on board. Bump the subscribe button up there, ring that bell and come on join uh, the community. And if you enjoy the session, please bump the like button. It does make a difference. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.